So guys, the Premier League is finally back. Well, it already is back. <laughs> yes, about uh, the opening weekend, guys, I missed out on not doing any videos because I was far too busy to do any videos at all. So I'm like terribly sorry about that if you were wondering why I haven't been uploading anything. That's because I was busy, so there's your answer. I really wish the World Cup could go on for like four months, five months, because it was that exciting. I, I was like enjoying it so much, as we all were, but it has to end, guys, and like a month, it simply has to end. So I spent the whole summer just waiting for this season to start, but finally, it has started. I'm just like so excited after just sitting here bored for like days and days and days just waiting for the season to start. But, 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 there is one thing I can still do. Predictions for week two. Although week one has already been, so this is week two. So let's get straight down to business. All of them are playing, so I'm dead excited. The half past 12 kickoff on Saturday is Cardiff and Newcastle. Oof. Hmm. Both teams got off to a very bad start in the opening weekend. Losses to Spurs and Bournemouth. I didn't think Newcastle played badly against Spurs. They did try, but after a few woodwork hits, they just could not get the ball in the back of the net. And Cardiff, well, Cardiff, let's be honest, they didn't really play that well against Bournemouth, so they've been totally outdone by Bournemouth. They have to do better. They simply have to, if they are to stay up. Many people have predicted Cardiff to go down, but uh, it, it's kind of harsh to me because I really like them as a team, but if they think they're going to go down, then that's good for them. But uh, i just like to see some promoted teams just stay up because I never want to see promoted teams go down. Anyway, Cardiff-Newcastle is such a tough one because both teams started off with defeats. So one of them has to do better here, although Newcastle kind of played well, Cardiff didn't. So I think Cardiff will try and do better, and Newcastle will just play the same way as they did against Spurs. However, this is a game I can only see ending in a draw, which is 1-1 is my prediction, because... I don't know, it just, I, just, I just have that sort of feeling that this game could be just a 1-1 draw. So on to the four 3 o'clock kickoffs: Everton and Southampton. Woo. Everton didn't play badly at Wolves. In fact, they have played pretty well, only just not good enough to earn all three points. And uh, what a debut it is for their new Brazilian signing, Richarlison, a brace in that game. So yeah, Everton played well at Wolves, only to end in a draw, which is kind of disappointing for them. But they were down to 10 men. So technically, leaving away from the Molyneux with 10 men and you get a point... It's still a good result in the end. And uh, at the end of the day, I just feel like that Wolves 2, Everton 2 was just a fair result. Southampton, on the other hand, just managed to stay up last season, so I just think they're going to struggle this season, but I don't think they will play too badly against Everton, of course. It was kind of dull in their game against Burnley, which was 0-0, and both keepers were forced into brilliant saves, but I just feel like it was a very dull 0-0 draw. But somehow, I just feel like Southampton will come to Goodison Park and pile on the pressure on Everton. But with a team with Everton's quality, I just think that Everton could just, just about nick the win. So what's my prediction? Everton 2, Southampton 1. Leicester City against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Hmm. Leicester were kind of unlucky to lose to Man United because they played well, but they just couldn't finish off their chances and Man United finished theirs, so there you go. Finishing is what I think Leicester will work on throughout this week, so I think they will just step up the play now against Wolves, possibly get the win. And as for Wolves... Not the best opening days they'll ever have, but still, it was a very good result for them at the end of the day. At the Monu Stadium, what an atmosphere that was. I was, like, blown away, and it was such a great atmosphere at the Molyneux. Only this time it's going to be trickier for Wolves because it's away from home at a team like Leicester City. And since they have a lot of new signings, I, I just think they're going to go for it this season. So, I just really don't get how people could predict they'll finish in the top half of the table. It's because... It just doesn't make sense to be like, isn't isn't surviving what they're meant to be pushing for? That's my opinion. I just think they should probably push for survival instead of just finishing in the top half of the table. They will try and play just as they did against Everton, only I do not think they will have the quality to take all three points. But I just think Leicester have, the, have a better team, so I think Leicester will probably win this game 2-0. Tottenham Hotspur against Fulham. Big story here that uh, their new stadium, Tottenham, will not open yet in like the next few months. It was scheduled to open against Liverpool on the 15th of September, only somehow for safety reasons it got cancelled and moved back. So did the Cardiff home game as well. So we don't know when their first ever game will be played at the new stadium, but it's coming. 
And Spurs were kind of lucky to come away with all three points against Newcastle. And a few woodwork hits from Newcastle just about saved Spurs there. And they leave with all three points, which I can't really understand. I mean, Newcastle deserved to get something out of that game. And the fact that Spurs made no signings at all. Neither have they sold anyone. No business. Like, why? Spurs might struggle for top four this season. I'm telling that now. I just think, <laughs> no signings. But shouldn't they, shouldn't they bring something fresh into the team? Or is it because Pochettino is just happy with the team staying as like a big family or something? I don't know. But if that's how they want it, then fine with them. Still, they're at home at Wembley against Fulham. So I just think they could nick the win. Only Fulham were just very unlucky to lose to Crystal Palace because they had so many chances but could just not finish them off thanks to Wayne Hennessy. Yeah, that's what Fulham fans will say. They, they'll think they just probably didn't get a result because of Wayne Hennessy because he made a lot of saves. It just proves these days that the Premier League is a very hard league to score in, so there's a lesson for you, Fulham. So good luck staying up, though. But hopefully they can get a result here, but I don't think they will. I just think that Spurs could actually win the game Something like 2-0. West Ham United against Bournemouth. Mm -hmm. This one is actually tough because West Ham lost so badly to Liverpool, which was so embarrassing with the, with the amount of money they spent in the summer, and a new manager, Manuel Pellegrini, who's a real winner, and, then, and they lose that badly to Liverpool. They really should do better, and they have to do better in this game, otherwise the pressure is already on. As for Bournemouth, they had a good opening day weekend, which is a 2-0 victory against Cardiff, which is a new, against a newly promoted side, that is very good. Throughout the game, they just dominated Cardiff, and they took all their chances, apart from that one penalty miss from Callum Wilson. And the two goal scorers, Ryan Fraser and Callum Wilson, will be the most crucial players for Bournemouth this season, I predict. So Bournemouth will play the same way as they did against Cardiff, only it's away from home, at West Ham United who are just aiming to do better than they did at Liverpool. But I think I know one way this one's going. I think it'll be 1-1. And Chelsea and Arsenal. Ooh. <laughs> London derbies. I love London derbies. They're like... London has so many derbies. Just a lot of them. This one is actually very strange to me because both teams have new managers. Maurizio Sarri and Unai Emery. Both teams are in for top four or possibly the title, which I think is highly unlikely. Chelsea had a good opening day weekend against Huddersfield. I, I felt they were somehow lucky because Huddersfield for the, in the first half totally played better than them. Only amount of luck for Kante and of course a penalty which was very debatable. Puts them 2-0 up at half time and then that's it. They took all their chances they've had. Huddersfield couldn't get it in the net. But it's 3-0 victory so Chelsea will come into this game with a lot of confidence. Arsenal didn't really play badly against Man City. Only they have just been outsmarted by the better team on the day. But it just proves that Unai Emery has a lot of work to work on to get this Arsenal team flowing and make them better, bring the quality. So Arsenal will be aiming to do better than Man City, so... Hmm, I don't know. I just think this game is, this game is just so tight, I'm telling you right, right now. I just think this game could be a 2-2 draw. It could be a very entertaining game. I hope it meets my expectations. It really needs to. On to Sunday's fixtures. Burnley and Watford. Oof. 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 I don't know what to say about this one. I mean, this one's going to be a very tough a very tough one to predict. Burnley were very unlucky to not leave with three points against Southampton. Thanks to the Southampton's keeper, Alex McCarthy, making a load of saves. And Burnley just can't finish any chances at all. And against a Watford team, who are just totally blown away Brighton at Vicarage Road, thanks to Roberto Pereira, it's going to be a very tight game. And both teams will try and go for it. Only, I think Watford... Watford? I think Watford could actually come out the better of the two teams. Like, a 2-0, I think. Man City against Huddersfield. Ooh. <laughs> away at the Champions. Man City. Like, last season, they came away with a 0-0 draw. Which was a very crucial result into them staying up. Which was very impressive. Only this time round, it could be very different. Man City looking to defend their title. Huddersfield trying to stay up again. But they lost 3-0 to Chelsea. And that was a very bad result. Man City have totally blown away Arsenal last weekend. So, I can see one way this is going. I think it'll be like a 3-0 Man City. Because Huddersfield just struggled for goals like they did last season. And Man City are very good at scoring them. So... There you go. Brighton and Hove Albion against Manchester United. Ooh, this game, this game, this game last season was one of the best upsets I have seen last season. Brighton beating United 1-0 was the, was, the, was the result that kept them up. And that was very impressive. 
This time round, it could be a bit different, actually, because Brighton got totally blown away by Watford. I mean, totally outplayed. I mean, they were just woeful against Watford. Man United, on the other hand, were kind of lucky to get three points against Leicester. I mean, the penalty and a very lucky goal for Luke Shaw, I believe. Playing well in every year doesn't mean you always get the results you want. And I mean, luck is involved in football. It happens. There you go. So Brighton will aim to do better. Man United will try and pick up more free points. Six points in two games. Woo. Only Man United have a better team than Brighton. So I'm just going to say 1-0 United. Now for the Monday night fixture, which is Crystal Palace and Liverpool. Crystal Palace didn't play badly against Fulham. In fact, the first half, they were a bit woeful. However, they were lucky to go in at half-time, 1-0 up through Jeff Schlupp. And in the second half, they killed the game off through Wilfred Zaha. I mean, where would Crystal Palace be without Wilfred Zaha? I mean, last season, they didn't win a game without Wilfred Zaha. Not a single game. Just think about it. If Wilfred Zaha had left, what would happen to Crystal Palace now? But anyway, they were kind of lucky against Fulham, but they came away with three points because they finished their chances off. As for Liverpool, a 4-0 victory against West Ham was very good. But the real star of that game was Sadio Mane, who scored twice. So Liverpool will try and come into this game to get another three points with such a very good performance again. You see, both of these teams have quality. They have such brilliant players. Only Liverpool have better players, so I just think that they'll come out of this one 2-1. And there you go, guys. Those are my predictions. And that is actually it for this video. Hopefully I get most of, most of these right. I probably won't get all of them right. Nobody does. You are absolutely lucky if you get all of these right, actually. You must be the luckiest person in the world. Hopefully I will get all of these right. Only I don't like being proved wrong, but at the end of the day, you, you just have to accept that you have been proven wrong. So yeah, the season is a long, long way to go. It's only the start, but seriously, I'm excited already. <laughs> but now that I think about it, I will continue making these prediction videos throughout this season because I, I really enjoyed this one. So guys, that is actually it for this video. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And make sure to turn on those notifications to make sure you do not miss any of my videos. Please leave a like and a comment down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.